Okay, so one of the things I really like about topology is the idea of being able to sort of continuously deform these potentially complicated and interesting spaces. And I also like this idea of being able to do homeomorphisms, sort of transforming one space into another without um, sort of um, tearing it or having to glue things so that you can continuously deform object objects and show that they're somehow equivalent to one another. Anyway, one of the key sort of underlying ideas behind these things is the notion of continuity. And I've always found it very interesting how it could be possible to define continuity in terms of such an abstract system where you just have a load of elements from sets and particular subsets, which in this case we're calling neighborhoods. But it turns out in the case of these Frechlet V spaces, which we've been talking about recently, there's a fairly straightforward way to define what continuous mapping is. So let's suppose that S1 and S2 are French letter spaces. And let's suppose that um, we have a mapping F from the elements of S1 to the elements of S2. Now it turns out, we can take this as a, de as a definition if we like, we can take it as a definition that this mapping F is going to be continuous if and only if for every subset X of the fresh set space S1 and for every limit point P of that subset X we have that the image F of P of P under our mapping F is going to be a limit point of the image F of X of the subset of X that we started with. So let's let's try and say this again. Basically what we're saying here is that a necessary and sufficient condition for a mapping from one Frechlet space S1 to another Frechlet space S2 to be a continuous mapping is that if we take any subset of our first space S1 and we take any limit point of that subset then the image under F of that subset X which we chose is going to have the property that the image f of p of that point that we chose, that original limit point, will also be a limit point of the resulting set. So essentially we're mapping the limit points of subsets to the limit points of subsets and somehow this is a way which we can nail down the notion of a continuous mapping from one fresh layer space to another. Okay, so I, I think it's perhaps easiest to see this idea visually. We have these two fresh layer spaces, S1 and S2, and there's a mapping from the elements of S1 to the elements of S2. We illustrate this by this uh, green arrow, F. So if I can get some kind of markers here, okay. Um, so we have this thing that's sending the elements of S1 to the elements of S2. We ask the question, when is this mapping F considered to be continuous? Well, the point is that S1 is going to be a set of elements. And there's going to be a lot of different subsets of S1. Um, so we can consider an arbitrary subset of S1. We can call it X. X is just some collection of elements from S1. And then we can ask, what are all the limit points of this subset X? And there's going to be various different limit points. So let's say that P is such, an imi such a limit point. Well, in this completely generic situation, uh, if we want F to be continuous, we have to have it to be the case that 
the image under this mapping F of this subset X, well, that's going to be some subset of the Frenchley space S2, and we're going to call that subset F of X. That's just the, the collection of elements that um, the things that were in X get sent to uh, inside S2. So that's F of X, the image of the subset X. And we require, in fact, that each limit point P of our original subset X actually gets mapped under F to a new point, F of P. And we require that that point F of P should be a limit point of this new thing, F of X. So in other words, we require that if P is a limit point of a subset of S1, then F of P is a limit point of the subset F of X. And this is the necessary and sufficient condition for continuity, for a mapping from the fresh lace space F S1 to the fresh lace space S2 to be continuous. Okay, so as far as I understand it, uh, these kind of fresh lay spaces are more general kinds of things than topological spaces. Topological spaces are a special kind of fresh lay spaces, and therefore all these interesting notions of topological deformations and homeomorphisms and continuous mappings and so forth, um, all of which we can discuss in terms of fresh lay spaces, but later we can um, see the more sort of physical ramifications of these things in the context of geometry which is wonderful because it gives me a good excuse to get onto the notion of an idea which i like very much in topology and of course also now in the more general context of fresh a spaces which is the idea of homeomorphisms so what is a homeomorphism well Let's say we have a fresh air space S1 and a fresh air space S2. And let's say we have a continuous map from F from S1 to S2. Now, if it happens that there is an inverse to this map F, which is also continuous, in other words, if it's continuous mapping F, from S1 to S2 has a continuous inverse, then this continuous mapping is called a, a homeomorphism. And homeomorphisms are very interesting because they preserve a great deal of the sort of topological structure of your objects because of the way that they sort of preserve limit points and such, and the, the fact that you can invert them. And in some sense, um, Okay, so when you can perform a homeomorphism to convert one space into another, you call those two spaces homeomorphic. And basically, the point is that homeomorphic spaces are in some sense the same because most of the sort of properties that topologists care about, like for example, how many holes does a particular space have, how is it orientated, what kind of invariants does it have, etc. All of these kind of properties are unaltered by homeomorphisms. And homeomorphisms also allow you to continuously deform um, whole families of different looking objects into sort of canonical forms. So a topologist is often said not to be able to see the difference between a donut and a coffee cup because one could be continuously deformed into the other whilst preserving the closeness and non-closeness of points. And that's really another way to think of what a homeomorphism is. You're allowed to bend, you're allowed to stretch, you're allowed to twist your space, but you're not allowed to cut it and you're not allowed to glue together distant points. This is how you can visualise what a homeomorphism is. But we can also represent it precisely in terms of the definitions of continuous mappings as related to limit points 
which we've just discussed.